I think we've all ended up meeting some snobby rich kids at some point in our lives. Usually it's when you go to school where you intermingle with all these kids from various backgrounds and upbringings. Now of course, as we get older, we learn to value ourselves not on how much money we have, or in some cases our parents have, but by who we are as defined by our actions. Well, at least, that's the plan. Now I've already talked about the segregation in my school in other videos, so most of you guys already know. But long story short, it was pretty much like the book The Outsiders, where there was ongoing tension between rich kids and poor kids, myself being the latter. I remember one time I was walking down the hallway and accidentally stepped on another kid's shoe. He literally said, What the funk, dude? My new shoes! My bad, man. It's crowded here. No dud, diptard. Do you even know how much these cost? Probably not as much as I would spend. Yeah, like you could ever afford splarries. I could buy your whole family, jackass. Whoa, calm thyself, limp prick. I said sorry already. What did you just say to me? I said it was an accident. As we were arguing, a crowd started to form around us. Fight! 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 fight. fight. Please hit me, dude. I dare you. You even touch me and my dad will sue you for everything you've got. Even though it's not much. Oh, I'd like nothing better than to knock that stupid smirk off your face. But I'm smarter than that. Tell you what, though. Why don't we pick this up after school? Take a walk in the valley. Then we'll find out if you can even crawl back to daddy and tell him what happened. All right, break it up! Just then, one of the teachers intervenes, as usual. Get to your next class, both of you! We look at each other for one more moment. Now! We had no choice. We couldn't fight in school because neither of us could afford getting suspended or worse. But out of school, well, anything's possible. On the bus ride home later that day, I talked about the situation with some of my friends. I can't believe that stuck-up prick thinks he can just bring daddy in to solve his problems. I mean, how much of a pansy can he be? I'm glad we're not rich. I wouldn't want to be that snobby. They're not snobby because they're rich, Bobby. They're just jerks. Well, I think it's a little bit of both. Imagine growing up not having to worry about literally anything ever. I imagine I'd be a little stuck up too. But not like Richie. He's just a dill hole. Whatever he is, you're gonna settle things with him, right? If he wants to come to the valley, I'm ready. If not, he's only showing everyone how much of a pansy he is. Although there was a clear tension between ourselves and the rich kids, we weren't perfect either. And as you can see, we had our flaws as well. I didn't really like fighting other kids, but I grew up in an environment where it was considered the norm and it was kind of a way to prove your worth. You see, to my own community, talking mad smack and then backing it up with your fist was one of the most honorable things you could do. And yeah, it was a little different than how the rich kids settled their own arguments, but surprisingly, every now and then, they'd want to prove their worth to us too. Anyways, as I got into high school, I realized that there was better ways to solving problems. I started to understand that we couldn't keep doing this, and sooner or later, our way of working things out would come to an end. My girlfriend at the time, who was part of the rich kids group, even tried to warn me. Do you want me to talk to Richie? I can probably get him to stop sticking his mouth where it doesn't belong. As much as I'd like you to tear him a new one, no, it's fine. I need to handle this on my own. You mean fighting him? I put my drink down and sighed heavily. <sighs> Look, Claire, it's not that I want to fight him, but this is how we do things. He's not going to learn any other way. Is that you talking or Jimmy? It's both of us, and I don't understand what the big deal is. He's a jerk. He's always been one, and it's time someone put him in his place. But is that really the only way? Violence? You're not like Jimmy and the other bottom dwellers. You have a gift for talking to people. Use it. You can't just keep punching your way out of things. I looked down at the table, and I remember thinking one thing. Claire was right. I couldn't keep resorting to violence, because whenever we got to the real world, our way of settling things would just cause more problems. Like, going to jail kind of problems. So I told myself I wouldn't fight Richie, despite both of our communities asking for it. I'd find a new way to move past these ancient dispute rituals and start the revolution that should have been started hundreds of years ago. I'd pave a way for kids in schools all across the world to settle their differences with words and not violence. Well, at least I thought so. That was until Richie decided to provoke me using Claire as bait. And being the dumb high school kid I was at the time, I fell for it. He caught me off guard one time in the hallway with his buddies. He started insulting me, saying things about my friends and family, which didn't bother me too much. I was used to it. But then he started saying things about Claire, and at that point, he didn't deserve a negotiation. She's only with you because she feels sorry for you. And you know what? I feel sorry for her. Let's settle it then. I remember how excited the crowd sounded when I said that. They were the mob that wanted blood, and I was gonna give it to them. Oh, are you for real? You actually wanna duke this out? I said nothing, but continued to stare him down. He's serious. Ha, 
Fine then, let's go. He started walking towards me. Not here. Huh? We're not gonna do this on school property. You don't get to have a chance that a teacher might break us up. We're gonna do this outside of school, so that when you're on the ground, begging me to stop crushing your face, I won't. You think I'm scared to fight you out of school? Fine by me. Another kid whispers something in his ear. But we're doing it in the hills, not the valley. You come to us. Changing the location isn't gonna save you. You still acting like I'm scared. Aren't you? I guess we'll find out, won't we? And just like that, we made plans to fight later that week in Hillwalker territory. I went against what Claire told me and what I originally wanted. But at the time, I only wanted one thing, to wipe that smug look off Richie's face. The old fashioned way, our way. Ah oh, man, retelling this story now, like, oh geez, it just sounds like it's heading for disaster, and there definitely was some of that. Like I said, guys, back then, I was far from becoming the person that I am now, and, you know, the person I was back then had a lot of flaws that I've since learned from and tried to do better. But yeah, as I said, my character had a lot of flaws at the time, anger and succumbing to it being one of them. That weekend, me and Jimmy drove up into the hills. You don't know how long I've been waiting for you to mop the floor with this prick. Damn, I wish I brought popcorn. Popcorn or not, it'll be a sight to remember. <laughs> oh, I'm counting on it. As we drove into the hills, I had this grim feeling in the back of my mind that this was wrong, and it wasn't too late to turn back. But I was so driven by my anger that I couldn't think straight. Claire tried texting me on my way there, asking me what was going on, and if I was really going to fight Richie. I knew she didn't want this, but it was too late. We were in the end game now. Okay, I'm sorry, I had to, but anyways, at that point, there was no going back, and I decided to ignore Claire's text until this was over. We arrived at the scene. Richie and a couple other guys were there waiting for us. Jimmy and I then approached them. About time you pansies showed up. When this is over, I want you to remember, you did this to yourself. That is all I can fit in today's episode. If you guys want to see what's next, please subscribe, turn on post notifications, hit the little bell icon so you get a notification when I upload the next episode. I think I've made it pretty clear by now, if you're over the age of nine, that these stories are based off of my life, but you know, this is scripted, this is, you know, a show, you know, this is a production that I'm making and producing for you guys with just me and a couple other people. I really have a lot of fun making these videos for you and you know, figuring out the story and, you know, using the source material that is my life and turning it into something really interesting on screen for you guys to watch and enjoy. Seeing your feedback in the comments, you know, it's it's all really cool and heartwarming and inspiring. And it motivates and drives me to continue making good content for you guys. So with that said, thank you to everybody that continues to support the videos and continues to watch. There's a lot more where this story and other stories in the future will go, so please stay tuned. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Terry Song TV. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Yeah, that's uh, that's all I got. Okay, bye.